So antimicrobial resistance is about bacteria, fungi, viruses and parasites that are all becoming resistant to the drugs we use. And this is a problem not only for human health, but also for our food security, for the environment, for our water security. And it's estimated if we don't tackle this slow, silent pandemic, it will cause 10 million deaths a year by 2050. GW4 AMR Alliance brings together researchers from across our institutions who are working on antimicrobial resistance so that they form an interdisciplinary consortium. We have a really strong and diverse portfolio of research and researchers um, working in all different fields from medical to biological, the environment, social sciences, the farming system. And so by bringing all of these people together, we can really tackle this important problem. Antimicrobial resistance is, is such a multifactorial problem that you know, we need that interdisciplinarity and we can't find that in just one institution alone. We've got four great universities which do a, a huge amount of research and then we've got very discrete populations and also a big interface with its stakeholders such as agriculture and industry. That's how we can get that strength in a One Health antimicrobial resistance approach. One Health covers health both in people, in animals and environment. And in all of those cases, there are social elements. For example, I've been working in, in Bangladesh, where unless you understand the risks uh, that are faced by farmers, you can't understand why they're treating their livestock, for example. If their livestock die, they have nothing. You really have to address the socio-economic aspects of their businesses, otherwise they're going to carry on treating and, of course, driving processes of resistance in the, in the process. Unless we understand the social drivers of both disease and treatments, we're not going to have any chance of solving the kinds of problems that are being produced. I work uh, extensively in low and middle income countries and one of the key characteristics of AMR is that it is genuinely a global problem. So we need to have cross-disciplinary work, not just nationally, but internationally. Asia, for example, is an area in which uh, there's a a major issue of antimicrobial resistance and the possible findings that we come up with there may therefore be of relevance to tackling the problem of global antimicrobial resistance as a whole. It's tempting to think about antimicrobial resistance just in the realm of human medicine but as a veterinarian, I'm thinking about how these medicines work across all the different animal species. So from a One Health perspective, from the animal side, we're also thinking about making sure that these medicines are there so that they can be used to treat animals with such infections. And one thing we did here at the University of Bristol is our veterinarians took the decision to not use highest priority critically important antimicrobials, so the ones that we save as the last resort for human medicine, in this was then able to give confidence to other veterinarians and farmers that they maybe didn't need to use these really important antibiotics. And that was taken up by the farming industries themselves so that now those are not really used in the livestock industries. And in the UK, we've really been able to reduce our overall antimicrobial usage, as well as particularly these really important medicines. Even though we reduce usage of antibiotics in the clinic and in livestock production, there's still these waste streams that, that basically transmit AMR through the environment. So uh, the waste that humans produce and the waste that animals produce, which contains antimicrobial resistant bacteria or, or antibiotic resistant bacteria and the antibiotics themselves, so that can drive evolution further. We need to really reduce environmental pollution to reduce the rate of emergence, but also to reduce the rate of transmission of already pre-existing resistant pathogens. Here at the MRC Centre for Medical Mycology at the University of Exeter, we are actively contributing to tackle the problem of AMR in, in, in fungi. One research team is really focusing on finding new antifungal targets to develop new drugs or vaccines. Another research team is more focused on how can, can we find ways to mitigate the development of antifungal resistance. The problem of 
AMR in fungal pathogens is not a problem of medicine or disease in humans alone. We have seen over the last decade or so that the use of fungicides, uh, azole antifungal drugs used in agriculture, uh, is playing a major role in the resistance development of fungal pathogens. And those fungal pathogens who are widespread in our environment, and that drives the resistance of fungal pathogens to the azoles we have to use to treat our patients. So that's a really serious concern. It's absolutely crucial that we have a one health approach. So we need to come up with cross-disciplinary and multidisciplinary research to tackle that problem. It's not, not an easy solution because there are many uh, stakeholders uh, in that process. Genomics can be used to tackle AMR by being able to understand these kind of transmission events, how, it, how the bacteria can pass from one individual, one animal to another. Um, but it can also be used to understand the scale of the problems. We can just look at the DNA and make pretty good predictions as to what that bacteria will be resistant to. And we can understand then how not only the bacteria move around, but also how the individual genes themselves can move around between different bacteria. This is another layer of complexity. So it tells us some really interesting things about uh, evolution and about the scale of the problem. How it gives us an idea of how much resistance is out there in the environment. GW4, particularly the AMR Alliance, cultivate a collaborative training environment. So one really important one was the uh, creation of these AMR crucibles. There was 30 uh, future research leaders across a whole different uh, scientific disciplines and over a series of three uh, different workshops essentially provided a platform for us to discuss our work, collaborate and kind of think of new ways to approach uh, AMR. Within the universities in GW4 we have a number of doctoral training programmes so whether it be through our own GW4 doctoral training partnerships or through the Medical Research Foundation's National PhD Training Programme for AMR Research, which is led through a GW4 university. What we aim to do is to uh, train researchers not only to be experts in their own discipline, but to also think about working across disciplines as well and to learn the languages of each other's research and to therefore be able to come together to deal with complex problems such as AMR, which require solutions driven from all of those different disciplines working together. Some people have called AMR a wicked problem, which is to say it's a really complex challenge which no one discipline can effectively resolve. We've all seen over the pandemic, we've had to balance epidemiological evidence against economic evidence against evidence that tells us how people are likely to behave. And this has really brought home to us actually that in order to manage these kinds of situations, we need to incorporate lots of different perspectives. Interdisciplinarity is really the key and that's really at the heart of the Alliance. Uh, the future is not certain and we can by our actions now reduce the impact of AMR into the future.